friends. Hello, hello. Welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. Okay, so <laughs> this morning I giggle because, you know, I always put in some thought. I always try to give us, you know, see what I can do, switch things up, and then, you know, make it interesting for you guys and teach you new techniques. And yes, I do repeat some stuff, but I think there's a actual grace and a tool and a meaning behind repeating things. And um, because it makes it stick, you know, it just, if you repeat it and you practice it over and over again, it makes it stick. So I have no problem repeating stuff. But today I had so many ideas swimming around in my head that I just kind of stalled. Anybody ever do that? Just stall like, ugh, God, I don't know where to start. I have so many things I want to try, so many tools I want to use, so many that I just was like, ugh. ugh. Okay, so I said, forget it. I stopped thinking and I just grabbed. I grabbed stuff, taped down my substrate, which is the 140 pound hot press Fabriano watercolor paper. And I used my pro artist tape. Uh, there is somewhat of a method to my madness but not really because I just couldn't think about it anymore I couldn't I was sitting in that space and I was just like staring off into you know la la land not going not getting anything done so and I know I am not alone in this so therefore there's an array an eclectic tool set that we have going on here um of course I grabbed my carbonellos because I love them and I think while I was collecting I decided remember when I did the no rules or no blending lesson with paint. This time we're going to do it with Carbothellos, charcoal pencil, Stabilo All. Um, and then I got these. I saw these in a course I was taking. Um, I have played with them just a tiny bit. They are called, they're by Sakura. And they are solid marker, solid, solidified paint for high temperatures. I don't know why it says high temperatures because I don't really know many people that paint in high temperatures. I mean, maybe with like a, an encaustic or something, but okay cool <laughs> but they are permanent easy to use opaque fade and waterproof marks on most surfaces dries within five to seven minutes uh, and then you just recap after use and this is what they look like they come with a tip they also have like a little plastic case that you just take off and discard on top of that and then they work kind of like a lipstick if i could get it to move okay maybe they don't work like lipstick oh yeah you can see that there's a bunch down there there we go and it just pumps up as you go, okay? So, but they're really creamy. So if you've used the Marabou crayons, they feel like that. But I, when I did play with them, they didn't move. They didn't move at all, really. Which kind of is like, so it's not like a water, I'm looking for my journal that I played with. Um, it's like not, not water soluble at all, so it does not move, but it leaves the marks, which I totally dig. And you can paint over them. Charcoal isn't so great over them. Hang on just a second because of the surface the, or because of the type of medium they are um which will, if you use them it would be a final layer on top of any chalk or whatever that you're using because they're they're not really waxy but they're creamy and just like marabou you can't do the crayon or the pen, chalk pastels over marabou crayons either but this is what i just went a little crazy abstracty and i played with like there's this is the colors inside here i played with them a little bit. I don't think I did on that one. But this is just, you know, tempera or uh, black gesso. But the pinks in here, like the colors are true to what they are on the cap, which is awesome. Completely awesome. But the pinks and the white, the white's pretty good. Um, the green, all of them I loved. So, um, but I did not like that they couldn't move once they hit the paper. They're there to stay. So, tip is that's not bad. It just means you do it, that's one of your final layers. Unless you want to paint on top, then you can do that as much as you want. So this will be, like I said, no blend. I'm going to try really hard. I might need a little bit of blending. I did grab my gesso, my titanium white gesso. This is the thick stuff, the heavy bodied. I just find lately that my regular liquidy gesso isn't as opaque as I like it. So, um, but not that I always need it opaque, but this one is. It's pretty decent. Like you see, remember the bars I've talked about in the past? The, they're almost covered, so it's not as opaque, or not as translucent. I wanted more opaque. So, anyways, these are by Sakura. They, the chalk pastels and charcoal do not go well over them, but they go well over that. Paint and stuff goes over these fine, once you've made the marks. And then I have my red china marker. Crimson red, for to be uh, uh, exact. Uh, I, I played with this, just little doodles here and there. I got them for Christmas. I haven't done a bunch of stuff with them. I may or may not use them. I don't know. I have my Woody Stabilo. These are both water soluble and also my regular pencil, my Stabilo All. These are both water soluble. I did the watercolor paper just in case I wanted to add water to these. 
because they're just so delicious. Once you activate them, if you're new to either one of these, they're really, um, they're highly water soluble. Like a little bit goes a very long way. So uh, just keep that in mind. I would test first before, if you're new to them and you've not played with them before, I would test first to see like actually how much you need to activate them. Um, but they're delicious. They're delicious. And then of course my tried and true, my black and white generals charcoal pencils. And then I got a dirty blending stump for my charcoal and a couple different erasers. I have my Tombow or Mono Knock eraser and then my mono zero tombo mono zero eraser and then i grabbed just a little paintbrush to go if to activate my stabilos if i wanted to a watercolor brush i had like i said my fabriano 140 pound hot press and then i used my pro artist tape to tape my substrate down so that it doesn't move just in case i probably won't need it but because i was thinking i might activate the paint or the stabilo with uh water I don't know how far it's going to go and I didn't, ugh, my ring is scratching this and I didn't want it to bubble the paper. So just, this is a precautionary. I may though, I may need it because I might come in and decide I don't like any of this and I'm going to delete a bunch of it and use my gesso to do it. So who knows? But what we're going to try to do today, or what I'm going to try to do today is again, no blend, but we're going to do it with charcoal and some paint and chalk and <laughs> wish me luck. Wish me luck, wish me luck. I have fun. I hope you have fun. These things always intimidate me, but I always end up having such a good time because number one is to have fun. Number two is to be free. And then I always learn something while I'm doing it. Always, always learn something. Okay. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. If you like what you're seeing and you're enjoying the How To Tuesdays, please like and subscribe and click that bell. Please, please. Then you get the personal notifications. And also, if you would be interested, we ha I have a Facebook group called Next Generation Art. I have at least three weekly, weekly prompts. Um, to get you started. It's an awesome group and I would love to see you there. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Wish me luck. Bye.
Okay, you guys, that was really cool. I really had no plan. You know, my default is this pose. I love the long neck, I love the head tilt, I love the whole, you know, I made her eyes bigger than I normally do. I wanted a little bit more um, personality, I guess, even though I think the other ones have personality too. But I really didn't blend anything, you guys. I held true, I held true. Um, and these, I forgot when I played with them before and I threw some watercolor over them, I loved the resist that it created. Loved it. The white is really cool too. All of them are actually. Um, but I love, you know me, I love the bright neon pinky and the oranges and the yellows and stuff. I just, I can't help myself. So this was awesome. These are super cool. You saw, how, I mean, I gave you just a little peek and the watercolor, you can go over them and I could, but like, I don't know if I can, if I'll be able to, well, well look at that. Maybe with the watercolor over them. Let's see, can I go here? Well, I totally lied, you guys. <laughs> the chalk carol, the chalk pastel is going over this. Well, what the heck? I don't know what happened. Well, okay, that's cool then. So the chalk pastel goes over these guys. Wow. Wow, just a whole new world just opened up to me. So that was so much fun. Why was it fun? Because I wasn't thinking, I was just playing. Every time I go, what about this? What about this? What about this? Try that, try that. I did. I did 
I did and I didn't care about the outcome like I you guys I hope you know of course you want it to like look decent by the time I'm done but I also want you guys if it's not great when I'm done it's not great when I'm done but you guys watch the process still go through it still do it st I still learned something look I just learned because it didn't work before but I might have had something else on top of it that didn't allow it to work so it, yeah I, it totally worked the chalk the chalk pastel went over these Sakura uh, paint sticks and and I got them on Amazon too, super easy to get so anyways um yeah and the resist that they create is magic you guys it's magic it's just a whole nother layer a whole nother layer of detail with just I just scrubbed and then I painted over it and it created this whole next layer whole next texture to this piece so thank you for being here that was so much fun I cannot wait to see what you guys do thank you thank you see you next week <laughs>